This cool. is thanks to Mayor Galway. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Tonight's Shield. Are we ready for a record? Okay. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of our, our Zoom Shield, our Parasha Shield tonight. Tonight we're studying Parashat Yitro. And Yitro was is the parasha we're starting today. I'm saying I want to share the screen for you. Okay. This is the 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 parasha we're starting tonight. It's parasha Yitro is the, is the parasha of giving of the Torah. The Torah was given on our Sinai. So it's really fundamental for all our religion to appreciate that all of Am Yisrael was together in Har Sinai. And it says a uh, word of the famous about this parasha. And towards the end of the parasha, we have the Ten Commandments, the Aserta Dibot. And these Ten Commandments is given to Moshe Rabbeinu and all of Am Yisrael on Har Sinai. So there's a few things I want to share with you tonight. First of all, I want to share with you a Dvar Torah, which was, uh, which I read in a Sefer, if you can see. This is Sefer of, don't see it. No, because of the background. The Sefer of my Rosh Yeshiva, of Rabbi Ram Gurvitz. So here, you know, in this parasha, the first of a set of Dubrot is Anochi Hashem Lokecha. When God gathers around all of Am Yisrael as one nation, Ki Echad Belev Echad, on Mount Sinai, and then everyone hears the, the voices. This is the first revelation of, of, of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, God himself, to mankind since creation of the world. And he gets that together and he says to them, what's the first words that God says? Anochi Hashem lokecha. I am the Lord your God. Asher tzatiha meretz mitzrayim. You have to appreciate that this never happened before in history and it never happened again. It was one time and all of Am Yisrael was there, all the Neshamot, from all the generations. Even the future Gerim, which future converts, which were going to be in Am Yisrael, were all present there. That's where we were there. And that was Mahmoud, the Gadol of Arsinai. Mm-hmm. And what does God turn around and he says to us? He says to us, I am the Lord your God. And you have to understand that this is a there was lightning and thunder, and the Chazal tell us that you could actually see the thunder and hear the lightning. It's two separate things. Even though the sound and the, the scene, you could hear it. They actually fell dead when they heard a uh, uh, Baruch Hu saying these words. They all died and they came back to life. And God said, Hashem well, I was the one God who took you out of Egypt from the house of slaves. Now, the first thing is question is, is a quote by Rabbi Yudha Levi. Rabbi Yudha Levi wrote the Kuzari. He says, when God says the first commandment, well, it's not really a commandment. Is it a commandment? It's a fact. Yeah, but, but there is a debate if it's the first debate, right? Well, this is undisputed. That is the first debate. I have the I haven't seen anyone who says that this is not the first of the debate. Okay. Is already a commandment. They shouldn't have any other gods. Mm-hmm. That's a commandment. But the first commandment, how do we understand it as a commandment? Is question number one. Question, oh, question number one. How is it a commandment? It's just a statement. Second question is Rabbi Yudha Levi in his famous Sefer or Kuzari. He asks, "What well, if you're saying I'm God, I'm your God?" So. The answer is that the commandment is to believe that I'm 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 your God. But you mean you mean I should have uh, I'm, I'm your God who have created who have created the earth and the and the sun okay. and thank you very much for saying is that. that yeah. Is that you trying to say? That is the question of the Kuzari. Also brought down by Sefer Binali. Him, he asked the question: Why didn't you say I'm the God who created the world? I created me. I created you. I created everything that exists. These are my commandments. Why is God saying, I'm the one who, who took you out of Egypt? It's a very big uh, event, taking us out of Egypt. But why is he mentioning that? So, because he really, answers, I'll give one answer, and I'm going to give today another answer. Uh, the Kuzari is answer. Does anybody know the Kuzari is answer? No. No. So, the Kuzari gives a famous answer, is that the the creation of the world happened. Do you know anyone know what year was this was in creation? When? 
This is the year, Jewish year 2448. So the creation of the world had two and a half thousand years ago. No one was there, no one, the present was there. So it happened a long time ago, it created the world. But taking out of Egypt is an experience that happened to all of them just now. They're all in the generation of Egypt. They all remember Egypt. They all remember when they were slaves in Egypt. So saying something relevant to them today. That's what he's telling them. And um, says the Kuzari, that's why Hashem approaches them and says, listen, remember, I'm the one who took you out. But I want to draw your attention to another idea brought down from Sefer Bin Ali. Mm-hmm. And he says, you know why you mentioned Yitzhak Mitzrayim? Not because it happened to them relevant, but because it's a continuation of your tea at the time. And this is all in preparation for Pesach. If anyone's already started Pesach cleaning, you go under two months. There's less than two months for Pesach. Yeah, my wife made us start this week. We started. And it's a continuation. That means you've got the first stage of leaving Mitzrayim, and the second stage is keeping, keeping, you're receiving the Torah. What is receiving the Torah? have got to do with your tea at me time. Well, it's a thing, a thing that we, 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 we mention how many times a day? In, in every- It's yet time, we mention many, many times in a day. In many Amazon, times. In, no, uh, in, <laughs> we so what, what's the relevance of that and, and Matan Torah? It's a prerequisite. I think it was a it's a prerequisite. That means you need to leave Mitzrayim. Why is it prerequisite? You explain what you mean? No, you you had to go to learn something in order to, to leave. Because how, how can a slave accept the Torah? Yeah, you know, if if you said that Anuchi Hashem lo so basically that's that's the freedom. So how can you you accept the Torah if you're a slave? So you exactly. Must... Okay, so excellent. So Gilad saying one idea. One idea is on basic on a simple level, and it's true. You can't ask me to keep Shabbat if I'm a slave in in, in Peru and it makes me work on Shabbat. That's what you mean? It, it's something, that there is a, a deeper idea there. That, yeah, you know, I, need to, I need to mentally be free. Right? So I cannot I cannot be at the point that I can I can experience something like Matan Torah when I'm, yeah. I'm still with the, with, with the slave mindset. Okay, so very good. So so I think also that's what I think what, what Mayo is meant and what Gilad is basically saying the same idea. That also on a, on a practical level, to serve Hashem, you know, you can't be an uh, evid to somebody else. But also on a mental level, I've got to be, you know, who am I serving? I'm working for one person. I can't work for two bosses. And then if you ever had that experience, actually, you're trying to work. I, I, actually, I was almost saying the opposite. People. Oh, you're saying opposite? So maybe explain what you mean. The, the opposite is is that in, in order to learn how to be a slave, we had to become slaves. Uh, again, sorry, man. In order to learn how to be a slave, we had to become slaves. Okay, so so it, 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 we're going to say, okay, let's say we've got three different ideas now, okay? We've got one but, idea. But then, but then at, at the same time, they, 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 they did need a like a break from between Mitzrayim and the receiving of the Torah, they weren't ready straight away. So they did need like a. There I mean, was, there was a but but, but where, where, what again? Where is the efus chut abchirapo? How how can you you know a slave doesn't have schut? Hold on, hold on. But the the from, from, the bechira, from the bechira was the bechira was Avram Avinu. He chose. That's a, yeah. That, that, that's what I was going to say. From Avram Avinu, you don't think that 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 and let's just put it all together because there's different ideas we can approach. Let's start again. The first commandment is, I'm the God who took you out of Egypt and now I'm giving you the Torah. What's the connection of the Torah and Egypt? So according to the Kuzari, because that happened to them and it was relevant to them directly. According to the Bina Elatim, because it's a continuation. Yeah, but-, but uh, it's, a, say- it's a, one thing, I'm gonna just explain what, what I heard from you, Gilad, and then you can add on if, if this is one instead. Um, and I took you out of Egypt and now I'm giving the Torah it's a continuation so the first simple understanding is I can't be a slave in Egypt and serve God because it's going to contradict practically I can't keep kosher and keep Shabbat and keep mitzvot so Gilad added another dimension that also mentally I can't have two bosses who am I taking orders from I have to be uh, an evid to one person and, and Meir he called it the opposite but I think it goes together I don't think it's opposite that um, you have to, to be, to learn how to be a slave, to be a servant of God, 
first you have to learn how to be go to Egypt. And he said that's what Abraham Avinu accepted upon himself. So I think I, that's what everyone wanted to say. And also, Gilad, I think that, if you think of the of the event of Matan Torah that he saw yeah. extreme, there the, the need to be a gradual exposure, or or the, there is an a, yeah, I would say gradual exposure yes. to, to Hashem's presence. So Hashem yes. reveals himself, but gradually through the makot. So okay, so you're saying he, he first appeared to them in Egypt, and now this is like a continuation. Even though, <laughs> so you're saying like he recognized them from before, but they all died. There's like nothing that we recognize. When they saw the presence of God, they all died and were re back to life. They didn't even see God. They just heard. They just heard God speak, and that knocked them out. So what's the point over here is that how is this a continuation? So May said it's a prerequisite, okay? And uh, uh, Gilad said, by definition, it's a necessity. But here, I want to share with you another idea that it's a completion. It's a continuation. That means when we got out of Egypt, we are freed from slavery. An extension of that freedom is receiving the Torah. Okay, now it's a little bit deep and it's a little bit contradict to different understandings. But when we say, Kili Bene Israel Avadim, what does that mean? Bnei Israel are servants to me. What was Moshe Rabbeinu called? Eved Hashem. Servitude. Now, how is servitude connect to freedom? Uh, we, all, we, we all have the Hashem. Uh, on, but, so are we free? Are we Bnei Chorin? What do we do on Pesach? We sit down. Bnei Chorin, we sit down. In Azurabia, we drink wine. We, uh, we do me. We have our best uh, fruit and clothes. But we celebrate the freedom. Leaving with time, accepting the Torah according to this Bina Leitim is a continuation of that. Now, how do you understand that? I want to because you are free from the wrong opinion, you are free from slavery to, to Abu Dhabi Lilim at, at different levels. Obviously, you are you are the, the freedom to okay, the, the, the freedom that you have clarity about, about your way of life, about the way to what to believe in. Okay, so I like that. So freedom of clarity of life for what to believe in. Okay, so that's very goes along the lines of what we learned from uh, Look, from there, there, there are deeper levels there, but um, because I'm going to draw attention to the Mishnah. Can you see the on screen? I don't know how much you can see it. So everyone should recognize this Mishnah in the last pair of Perkeavot. I'm Rabbi Yeshua Ben Levi. Does anyone know what's Har Chorev? No. Har Chorev is, is another name for Har Sinai. Exactly. So Bat Kol means a heavenly voice comes out and announces and he says, For the disgrace of the Torah. That means Somebody doesn't study the Torah. It's, it's like a disgusting. We're here on this world. We're given the Torah. And we don't study the Torah. So this is the part I want to explain. The, the tablets of, of the Ten Commandments were written on two tablets of stone, sapphire stone, and they were hollowed out. It wasn't engraved. It was totally hollow from one side to the other. Now, there's two miracles, which I know of, maybe three, of the, of the two Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments were written five on one side and five on the other side. Okay? Now, when they're written, they weren't engraved. They were totally hollowed out from one side to the other. Now, the, the magic of it was that when you look through one, you could see all the way to the end. If you turn them around, you also see clearly straight through from one to the end. And it doesn't look reversed. It's not mirrored. That was the, 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 the miracle of it. That was one miracle. That was totally hollowed so, out. So what do you mean by hollowed out? So, so if, you, if you imagine you have a stone and there's like a hole. Yeah. So you have a hole in the shape of an aleph. The hole in the shape of a bet. Right. Each one was so, hollowed out all the way through. Uh, now when you turn it around, it, sh it should be reversed. It should be mirrored. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the miracle of it was, even when you turned around the Luchot, it was still had the Aleph the right way around, the whole Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. and you could see straight through it. Miracle mm -hmm. number one. Miracle number two is that you see when the Mem, a letter Mem, 
if you hollow it out, there's like a little block of which should be in the middle, right? That hovered, that stayed in the middle. Exactly, that was another miracle. Hovered. That, that's what I was going to ask. That's what I was going to ask. But then you said Aleph, and you can't. There's nothing in the middle. Right, exactly. So that was another thing. That was the miracle of the men. And another thing was, if you see that the Ten Commandments, um, the Ten Commandments, the first five commandments are Ben Adam Lamakom, between man and God. Right, there shouldn't be any other gods, keep Shabbat. The other five is between man and man. Like, don't be jealous, don't steal, don't be adultery, don't, uh, don't kill. Now, the, the, let, the letters, the letters on the left side were much bigger than the, the side on the right side. That means, let me explain again. Each, so each of the two tablets will weigh the same size and weigh the same amount. Now, there's much more psukim on the first five. All right, if we go to the Torah, just the first commandment is Anokhi Hashem, look how many words there are. And corresponding to that, you got two words, not your tach. Two words, not enough. Two words, yeah, not enough. Lot Achmod. Lot Achmod is a bit more. Because look, Achmod is Shetrecha. But all the rest of them are just two words. And on the other side, you got whole paragraphs. So how would they occupy the same amount of space? So the five, which were Ben Adam Lechavero, were bigger letters. I don't know if you can imagine that. I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of it. But the letters of them were each one bigger. And why, what does that represent to us? It represents to us the, the side. Why, why did God want to make the, 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 the five letter side in big? Why do you want to make it in big? When you're making a sign, you want to make big letters. Why do you want to make big letters? So I think that the importance of Ben Adam Chavero. Thank you. Because that's the importance. Exactly, Gilad. When, when, you, when we study in the Torah, the, the importance, okay, so the first five, that's Ben Adam Lamakom, and they're first because they are important. Ben Adam Lamakom, they come first. Okay, in some ways more important. But what do we want to stress? The importance of Ben Adam Lechavero. Yeah, and that's why they they parashat kedushim. The rov parashat kedushim it's ben adam lechavero. And that we have a lot of parashat ben adam lechavero. But here we see that the letters are big because Hashem wanted to say it's important. Be your friend, ben adam lechavero. That's why we have these commandments. The only reason we got the Torah is because Am Yisrael were united. Ki ish echad belev echad. When we were together, that's when we received the Torah. If we're not together, and there's angry between us, the jealousy between us hatred between us, then then we don't have room for Torah and we wouldn't have it. So we have to be united. That's one lesson of the, of the Ten Commandments. Um, so when God giving us the Ten Commandments, he's telling us these are our commandments. Says the the Mishnah in Pirkei Harut is hollowed out. al Harut, hollowed, ela Kherut. What's the difference between Harut and Kherut? It's a play on words. Charut means hollowed. Charut means free. Bnei Chorin, like we say on Pesach. El lecha bnei Chorin. Elamish asek betalmu Torah. I don't know if this is what you meant, Gilad. But when you study Torah, that makes you free. Now I'm gonna head. I'm gonna explain to you two approaches which I heard from my rabbis. What does that mean? El lecha bnei Tor Chorin elamish asek betalmu Again, the greatest leader who brought us the Torah was Moshe Rabbeinu. He was called the Eved. So how can on one hand you be called an Eved, and the other hand you be called Bnei Chorin? You can't be slave and free. It's an oxymoron. Ech geinisht. It's geinisht. That's what you say in Yiddish. Yeah, it's geinisht. Why? Why? But because it depends slave to, to who. If you look at Rabbi Yehuda Levi, he oh, said uh, only he on. said Avdei Azmanim Avadim Bnei Avadim, and Rak Avdei Hashem Ele Bnei Chorin. You right? Excellent. Excellent. Absolutely excellent. Listen, you're on fire today. I'm telling you. The Paro, we're giving you a proof from Paro. Paro had a daughter. And, well, let's start the story again. What happened with Paro and Sarah? We're going to just stop scaring staring now. Okay. Paro took Sarah. Okay. And what, what was the miracle that happened to Paro? Do you remember? When he took that, Sarah. That, that he received the, he, he had the Tzarat, I think. Yeah, he had illness, he had Tzarat, and also he had Atzirut. Yeah. And then... Um, he saw that it was because he took Sarah. Avram prayed for him, 
and he got killed. And when Abraham prayed for for Paro, um, he he liftach lo tenekavim. Also, Sarah also opened up her womb, and she became also pregnant as a result from Abraham, because Hashem healed her. That's why we have a rule: kol aneane, kol amitpalel beat chaveron anet chila. If you pray for your friend, and again we're talking about Adam lechaveron, you pray for your friend, then you need the same thing. You will be answered first. Because Abraham, he prayed for the Paro to, to be cured. And his wife was cured and she was able to have children, Sarah. Um, now, Paro, seeing as a result of that, the amazingness of Abraham, he was well impressed and blown away. He decided, I'm going to give my daughter, Hagar, to Abraham Avinu, not as a wife, as a shifcha. Now, what does that mean? I prefer my daughter, who was a princess of, of Egypt, okay? This is, uh, we're talking about on the level of Cleopatra, at least, yeah? And she's going to be a servant in the house of Abraham Avinu. Now, if you can imagine, the, who's the most, Ben Chorin, freedom. A king. He, he's free, he can do what he wants. Says the king, I I want my daughter to be an Eved, the Shifcha to Abraham Avinu. Now, here we're talking about Goy. Now, anybody explain that to me? Yeah, but you know, when it's, um, there's so many different ways to explain it. <laughs> on, give me one, go on, one, give me a try. Look, when at the simplest level, you know, when you are a slave to the most, the only real power in the world, so you are free from all the rest, right? All right. And that, that's what it's basically going to come to. That, that's really the answer. You just see here, it's just an example that you can have a type of servitude which is even more than being free. Because Parah said, listen, you can be free. You can be a princess. You can do whatever you want. But it's going to be a higher, it's going to be an upgrade for you to be a servant to Avraham Avinu. Look at this man. He's a holy man. Look at the life he lives. Look what miracles happen in front of him. He's walking with his great creator with God. So it depends who are you a servant to. So when we are freed from Egypt, we're freed from slavery, but what kind of slaves were we? Slave to Egyptians, to slave to man. If you're getting upgraded to being free, to be a servant of the Akadosh Baruch Hu, the creator, and I took you out of Egypt. So it says in the Seven of Binala, this is a continuation of Yitzhak Mitzayim. When we say in the Pasuk, we say, because I took you out of Egypt. Second, where is it? That's it. That's the continuation. And as another, another, you just go to go another level deeper, one step deeper. Kitov lo imach. When when uh, the Torah tells us there's a concept of a Jewish servant, a person can have a Jewish servant, and he's called Kitov lo imach kiilu kana adon leatzmo. So what's the difference between a servant and a master? So there's alachot. If someone has a Jewish servant, he has to treat him well, make sure he gets the good sleep, make sure he gives him a bed, give him a pillow. If you only have one bed, one pillow, what do you do? Yeah, you give the pillow, yeah. You give him the pillow, where do you sleep? Where's the master sleep? If the servant gets the pillow, the master sleeps on the floor. So what's the difference between a master and the servant? The main difference is, is that who is he working for? The melacha. Is it for the adon, for the master, or for the servant? The servant, yeah, he does whatever the master. Why he, why he should uh, exactly. the Exactly. Because the same ear that, yeah. Because avad I am, you're supposed to be a servant for me, not for the other people. That's exactly the reason of it. Now, the, the melacha, that means the servant, he gets treated well. When we are servants for Kaddish Baruch Hu, we will get treated well. Hashem will look after us and provide for us. That is part of being in the service, if you're in the service of God. But the side benefit is what, what happens to all of the, the produ products, pro uh, productivity of the, of the Melacha. So that's Toblanu Kitkola Yamim, Ba'olam Azeh, and Olam Abba. That's kept for us. And you see, what's the difference between Rasha and Tzadik? Rasha, Afilu Bechayem, they call dead. Mm -hmm. 
a poor man, Ani, is Nikhshav Kemet. Uh, uh, a person with Sarat is considered like a dead person. What does it mean, dead? What does it mean, alive? So here we're talking about the concept that they don't have the feeling. He calls it chaser lem hagashat hachayim b'shlimuto. What's the optimum of life? What's the optimum of living? The freedom of living. When we say someone who studies Torah is ben chorim, why is that? So if you understand what life is about, what you're supposed to be living for, each action has a value. Then you feel alive. Then you ben chorim. He gives you an analogy. You know what can you do? You can either work for the king. And you're working in the in the jewelry department, and you're creating the the jewels for the coronation of the king. So everyone, when, when they look at the crown of the king and they see, wow, look at that arrangement, everyone says, yeah, it was me, I did it. That has something of value. But somebody who's working for for he's carrying buckets of water, carries them to the top of the hill, and then pulls them pulls them on, off the cliff. It has no meaning. There's no meaning to life, has no purpose. So one is considered like he's dead, one's alive. So when we appreciate what we're doing, when we're living as Jews and we're studying the Torah, every action that we do has a purpose. Everything has ramification. Everything has a change to it. So everything has meaning. That is true freedom, true, uh, true, true life. And it's something which is eternal. You have to preach that every time you do a mit, a bracha, and you know, Joe asked me about tefillah, what do I do? Do I go back? Do I not go back? Does it make a difference? Of course it makes a difference. It makes the whole world of difference. Now, it might, you might not see the difference here, but it affects. And if, that's what we see when you study Kabbalah. What is Kabbalah? Kabbalah on the deep side is study how the whole uh, mechanism of the world works and how your brachot and your actions, or especially of mitzvot, affect in the higher worlds. And it's something which we just even don't understand. We have to appreciate there is a, there is a, there is a reason for it. And this is the gift that we got on our Sinai. So every day, the heavenly voice comes out from our Sinai and says, whoever doesn't study Torah, because it's a disgrace for the Torah. You don't understand that the freedom of a person is to be study Torah, because that's how you see, that's how you become alive. You become alive when you study what actions that you can do can make a change, especially if you learn practical halakha. So that was one point which I I saw from this is from my teacher that I, I learned from Rabbi Ram Gurovitz. Another idea I had from my rabbis, and I think this is Bashem the Chofetz Chaim I had it. What is freedom? So, if I ask you, in the analogy of somebody to, to driving, somebody asked the Chofetz Chaim, he said, well, Chofetz Chaim wrote a famous book. What was the famous book of Chofetz Chaim? Anybody know? Uh, excellent, excellent. Shmirat alashon. What is Shmirat alashon? The alachot of lashon ara. So all the alachot of lashon ara, they were all scattered around. It wasn't written down properly in in order, not even by the Rambam or the Shulchan Aruch, but it was it was brought down as as a law, as a lacha. Rambam brings it down, also is brought down on also in the Shulchan Aruch, but not in a way that can be studied. The Chafetz Chaim, he put it all together. He was the first one compiled all the halachot with the sources from the Talmud, from the Gemara, from the Rishonim, from Rambam as well. So somebody came up to me and said, Rabbi, now that you've written this book, I can't speak. Because there's all, what am I allowed to say? I'm not allowed to say. I speak about a person. I can't speak. And what did the, the Chafetz Chaim say to him? He said, no. Before I wrote this book, you couldn't speak because maybe you'd say Lashonara, maybe you wouldn't. But now that I've written the book, you know exactly what you can speak, what you can't speak. On the contrary, I've allowed you to be able to speak. An analogy of somebody to drive a plane. You've been in the cockpit of a plane. There's a zillion buttons, yeah? Buttons everywhere. Yeah, levers, push a button. Now you put there and I say, okay, Bachavod, you're free to fly the plane. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You can fly anywhere you want. I'll put you in the cockpit. Yeah, Joe, look at you smiling. You've been on a bike. You've never been in a plane. I'll let you drive the plane. What are you going to do? Anywhere in the world you can fly. Shall I tell you what you're going to do? Sit in that cockpit and do nothing. <laughs> exactly. Because you don't know what to do. You don't have to fly the plane. You yeah. can't do anything. And the same thing also with, with a musical instrument. You give it a musical. So there's, there's different, you know, you have to study how to learn it, how to read music, how to play the music. But once you study it, 
and it's an effort. And maybe you have to be a slave to the to the book to study and pass the exams. But once you know it, you're flying. You can play any music you want. You can fly anywhere you want. And this is the freedom of Ben Chorin. That, that and Ben Chorin, if somebody studies Torah, you're a free man. Because you literally can know, according to the rules, to play the game. So that, that was the first part of the shiur. I hope you enjoyed that. And for the second part of the shiur. I mean, why, why don't we have Ezehu Ashir, Ezehu Hakam, Ezehu Gibor? We don't have Ezehu Hafshi, why do I have it? No. I'm not sure. What's your question? Uh, um, okay. We have in Pakavot Ezehu Ashir. Yes. So what's your question? Why don't we have Ezehu Hafshi? Ezehu Lohai? Ezehu Hafshi? Ezehu Ben Harim? Ezehu Ben Harim, yeah. Okay, so that'll be nice. That's a nice addition. But according to this Mishnah, that is part of the explanation of the Mishnah of Enlacha Ben Chorin. Someone is Ben Chorin is somebody learning, learning to Torah. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to share with you another idea. Can we share the screen? Okay. So one second before I share the screen. I want to do something. Okay. So I prepared a few little slideshow. Okay. Oh, and I forgot. Oh, I forgot to mention. Um, can you see me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So this show should should be a little nishmat Rivka Bachina, Rachashim Denachan and Bagan Eden, and Rufuash Lema. Two weeks ago, I, I said here Rufuash Lema for one of our neighbors who was who was Mordam uh, Trump critically ill. And he came out of hospital this week and he's back home. Um, yeah, and he's now yeah, preparing for his daughter's wedding, which was meant oh, to be uh, last week wow. when he was in hospital. So, and just I'm just saying the power of prayer when all of Amisai get together because everybody, I don't know if you remember that, I went out for half an hour, I went and did slichot, I came back and prayed for him. And all of the community here in this neighborhood, we all got together, everyone did Kabbalah, everyone said we're going to study Allah, we did Tehillim, they gave out. And when everyone prays together, you see a tremendous power. This guy was, was, how do you say, Murdam and Munsham? He was, he was a, no, no, he was, a, he was a, a connected to machines, life support machines. And now mm. instead, of, instead of having his daughter's wedding, he was connected to life support machines. And we prayed for him and he had the Rufua Shlema. And now he's preparing for the wedding, Bezat Hashem. So Rufua Shlema also for all of Israel. Okay. Um, especially for Gabriel and Omer Batli Amalka, Lisheva Batsheva Batrivka, Tigvashni Bat Rosette, and Rukhama Khana Bat Suhaka. Amen. Claudine Bat Khana Rukhama. And Claudine, yeah. Yeah, now Rafa Nelem for the Nefes of Father Go Father. Now, I would like to share with you today. I, this, uh, sorry, just quickly, I, yeah. uh, I don't know, maybe a month, two months ago, yeah, so I'll, I'll try and make this story really quick. But um, I was driving Golders Green with my wife, and we saw uh, someone from synagogue. And he's, he's waiting for, I think, waiting for a cab or an Uber. And I called him. I said, I guess jump in. He said, he, so he jumped in the car. We're driving. And he said, um, we we're talking to him. He said, his, his son's not, not so well. He had a stomach pain, a very, a very random, unknown stomach pain. He didn't know what it was. Doctors didn't know what it was. And what have we carried on driving? He made, made him a cake. And I mentioned his son's wow. name in this, in our shield. And it was it was refreshing oh, wow. for his son. He's, he's uh, I don't know ten, and since then, like maybe the day after we had friends who came over, and that you, friends, you, what, you the friends, what? What's his name? Uh, uh, Gelad. Gelad. Uh, uh, Galo, Galo, Galo. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. yes. So he, they, he comes the wife. Every Shabbat. He comes yeah. Every Shabbat, yeah. With his daughter. So, so our friends, one of the, they're a couple, and her her brother. Is uh, he's he's a doctor? I can't remember the name. He's a, he's a very good doctor for, for kids, and we recommended him to Elad and Galo, mm. and he came and he son and he didn't I, he didn't can diagnose, but exactly, but he was very good and he helped them a lot. Oh, wow. and it comes like yeah, it's well, sure. sure. so that's so you're thinking about someone else and you're caring for them and you pray for him. Yeah, well, well, and, sure. well, that's great to see that. Michael. That's think, really that. Think, but that is part yes, of the yes, message yes, of this week's yes, parasha. You were, you were at the right place at the of Am Yisrael. Yeah. But that's Kesha Chat. Yeah. Hazak. Now I'm excited to share with you the next part of the shiur. Uh, is Mayor here with us? Mayor. Yeah. Can, can you get Mayor back on? Okay, good. Um, so I want to. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and I actually sat down today for a couple of hours to do this. 
And this is what I want to share with you. Can you see the screen? What can you read, Mayor? Can you just read for us? What did it say, Joe? Can you read it? Torah Misinai, the unbroken chain transmitting the Torah from God to Moshe Rabbeinu in 2448, passed through the generations from teacher to student until 578, 2021 to Mayor Gabai. Right. Did I spell that right? Did I spell that right? Uh, there's a fine motion. There's A missing. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, with that B A Y? Okay, I wasn't sure. So we're going to make a change. Okay, so I'm going to change that. And this is what I want to share with you. But look, look at this. Ami Saul was given the Torah by Har Sinai. And it was given directly, saying, we said, I said, I took you out of Egypt. God gives the Torah to Moshe. So we know in Perkei Avot, we read, Moshe kibel Torah mi Sinai, and he gave it. Now, follow this, this uh, screen, this slide, it's about 12 slides, and we're going to go directly from Moshe Rabbeinu, Giving the Har Sinai, if you can see the year, I put in the Jewish years, 2448, giving them the Torah. Okay, that, that is the year, if you're looking at our, to know currently 2021, so it's BCE means minus. So we're minus 1,212 before the common era, before the count today, which we count 2020, 221. Sorry, Rabbi. Okay, one second, you know what? Yes. I don't want to. I don't yeah, want to say the you. word, but BC stands for uh, someone else. It's not, no. So, yeah. 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 So CE stands for someone else. Yeah. But BCE doesn't stand for someone. Else. No. Oh, yeah, there's okay. A, it's before AD coming out. Yeah. It's yeah. before coming out. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, thank you. Coming out. Okay. Excuse me for my lack know, of okay, uh, that's fine. education. <laughs> okay. So A A D A D and C E. Is uh is someone else, but BC is just common era. That's what it means. So, so we right, right. Okay, should we go back to the slideshow? Are you excited for it? It's going to be a little bit of history. If someone finds it boring, I apologize. I found it fascinating, <laughs> but we're going to go each generation. Okay, we're going to try and run through it quickly. Of of uh, of teacher and student. Talmid, Rabbi Talmid. From Moshe Rabbeinu to Mega by sitting in this room, but it could be anyone in this room um, and anyone in this Skype share. So, can we just share the screen? No. So, the first thing is we said, we said, Moshe Kibel Torah Mi Sinai. That was in the year minus um, 1300. Then we had the Nevi'im. First Navi after Moshe Rabbeinu was Yoshua. Okay, Yeshua. after Yeshua was Pinchas. After Pinchas was Eli. After Eli was Shmuel, Shmuel Anavi, and obviously he appointed David Amelech, and then we had the kings. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to try, try go through this project. This is the year of minus 800. That's before the the, the era. We're talking about 3,000 years ago. You following? Then we have. Uh, I don't know why my. Uh, there we go. The Nevi'im, Achia Shiloni, Eliyahu Anavi. This Talmud, this is all the Nevi'im, it's all documented in the Tanakh, all of this. Eliyahu Anavi, his student was Elisha, Yehoyada, Zechariah Anavi, it was Hoshea, uh, Amos, uh, Yeshaya, Micha, Yoel, Nachum, and Achavakuk, all the Nevi'im, Tzafanya, and Yirmiya. These were the years that we're talking about from the years, this period of 400 years of Jewish history. During these few hundred years, um, there was the kingdom of Israel was this divided into Yerovam and Yerochavam. Where, where was the Shlomo Melech built Bayat the Rishon? first temple? Churban Bayat Rishon was, was with the yeah. Zechariah. Yes, was during the period of Zechariah. So in these 400 years of event, these were the, the events that happened. Okay? Um, what, uh, Nebuchadnezzar just destroys the temple at the time of Zechariah, quite right. The story of Purim then happens. Ezra at the end of the Navi, comes back from exile and he rebuilds the second second temple. That is a period of 400 years. Okay, so let's just go back where we're up to. We've got Moshe Rabbeinu, David Amelech, all the prophets, the Nevi'im, 
the building and destruction of the temple, the story of Purim and rebuilding of the temple. Okay, just wait for my Gabba at the end. This is the year of minus 400. Then we've got the Anshe Knesset Agdala. Who are they? So you got from the beginning of Baruch ben and Ezra. This is still recording in the Tanakh, in the Navi, still written down. Um, and we've got Shimon Adik, which is actually buried in Yerushalayim. People go there, I went there as well. You can see his grave in, in uh, next to Me Yeshiva, actually, it's quite nearby. And then we have all the Zugot from Pirkei Avot, from the time of the Mishnah. This is the time of the, the Greek Empire, Alexander the Great, Yosifus, he wrote that down. Mm -hmm. And you have all the Zugot of Shammai and Aftalion, Hillel and Shammai, Netai Arabeli. This takes us another period of time, another 300 years. What's Aftan Sheknesset Agdola? Uh, after? So we're talking about uh, this, yeah, after that. This is the time, the period of the beginning of the written of the, so until now we have Navi. Navi and Ketubim. After the Navi and Ketubim, Ezra Nachem at the end, Daniel, what do we have after that? We have the Mishnah. The Tanaim. Exactly, thank you. The Tanaim. So who was the Tanaim? Now this is, there was many, many Tanaim. Here is just six generations of Tanaim from the year minus 10 to the year 180. Okay? So this is a period of about 200 years. We had had six generations. We're talking about Hillel Lazaken, uh, uh, all his descendants from David Amelech. These were all descendants of David Amelech, and this was the years that they lived. And this is a son, father and son, father, son, father, son, six different generations until Rabbi Yudah Nasi. Who was Rabbi Yudah Nasi, otherwise known as Rabbi? He wrote down the Mishnayot. He was from Rabban Gamliel. Yeah. So this was a time during the Roman Empire and the destruction of the Second Temple. That was the story of Hanukkah. And if I know the fall of Masada, if you've been in Israel, that also happened after the times by the Romans, after the destruction of the Second Temple. This was all recorded in the Mishnah. At the same time, we also had Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Rabbi Meir Balanes, Rabbi Yudha Bar Eli, all of these times, same time. What next? Amoraim. After the Mishnah, you got the Gemara. So here you also got the seven different generations of Gemara. Okay, a period of also 250 years. From the beginning of the cycle, of, if we count from, you got a year 160 to the year 420. Rabbi Yochanan, Ravuna, Rabbi Ravan, Rav Ashi. We all study in the Gemara, but there's many different uh, Amoraim in the Gemara. But this is just a link of student and teacher, Rav and Tarmid. Um, this is also the beginning of the other religions, the ba and also the Babylonian, ta the, the Talmud, Gemara was written all by Rav Ashi. He was at the end. After that, you got the period of the Savoraim. This is the years that they lived, and that takes us up to the year of 600. Okay, that means how many years ago is that? If we're now in year 2021, and this is the year 600, we're about 1,400 years ago. So that's halfway through Jewish history. Okay, so we just did the Tanaim, the Mishnah, before that was the Anshayk of Tagdola, the Nevi'im, and the Ketubim from our Sinai. You following? The next we have the Geonim. This is in the seventh century. All of these are the list of Geonim. Um, from Rav Haigon, Rav Shuriagon, Rav Gershon, Noah Gola, who made the different Takanot of Rav Gershon. He was the one who made a Takana, the reason why you can't have two wives, because of Rav Gershon, Noah Gola. According to the law, you're allowed. But he strongly advised against that. And he made a Kherim or Benu Gershon uh, not to marry two women. And this is also the rise of the uh, Arabs, uh, Arabic Empire, also in the seventh century. Next was the period of Rishonim. Now, this is a period in history, about 500 years. And what, what happened of this during these times, and this is what's fascinating, and this is a direct link from Rabbi Gershom, also teacher and student. Now here was a split between Sfaradim and Ashkenazim at the time. At the time, you have to remember in world history, there was the Crusades between Arabs and the Christians. That was the years in, ten, in the 10,000. And also the Spanish Inquisition. But I'm going to go through the Ashkenaz way just because I studied them by the rabbis in the, uh, the Ashkenazi Kishivot and I have a direct link. But also, maybe we'll do another time on a different shield, how we can do the chain from Rambam uh, 
from the Rambam till Rabbi Ovadia Yosef, maybe we'll do that another time. But if you follow here, you got Rashi and his children, Rashi, where we study in the parasha, Rashbam, Rabbi Nutal. And that brings us down, all this is a teacher and student, till Rabbi Shalom of Nushtat, and he was grandfather of the um, Truma Tadeshen. Truma Tadeshen was the first of the Achronim, early Achronim, sorry, and he was the last of the Richonim. The Shulchan Aruch, Bet Yosef, he, he, right, he brings in an alakha, and the Ramah from the Ashkenazim, who go mainly by the Psakim of the Turma tradition. This is in 1460. So here we got the early period of the Achronim, and then we go, they, he studied by Rabbi Yaakov ben Moshe Magulis. He was studied by Rabbi Yaakov Polak, and he is Rav Shalom Shachna. Now, why is it in yellow? Because the yellow is family. He was a son in law. Ramah, was written on Shulchan Aruch. He was a family son of, of 1572. That brings us to. And this was a student, was Rabbi Shok uh, Falk, which was a Kohen. He wrote the Pirush of the Sma, also a Talmud of the Marshal of Shlomo Luria. At the same time, the Sephardi Gaonim at the time was the Abarbanel, the Shulchan Aruch, the Ariya Kadosh. Same period of history in the 1500s. This is direct passing of the Torah from student to rabbi to student in the Shiol. And this is the books which we st I study every day when I study Shulchan Aruch, I study Choshan Mishpat, Smat, Risha, these are the books. But, uh, when you say now, passing you the Torah, when you say passing yeah. the Torah, but, but the, the, actually the passing of the Torah, as we understand it, ended up with the, with the pairs. So the they, they were, when, when, they, when, it, it, when they, they hand it over to Klan, like the light's over. This, no, so what, they, what's over? What's over? So you have to understand there's different parts being over and over. When, when I'm talking about now a chain of Torah Misinai, that I'm teaching you what I learned from my Rosh Hashiva. He taught me what he learned from his Rosh Hashiva. He learned from his Rosh Hashiva. Each one taught his student. Okay, when I teach you something, when I teach in the shiur, you say it, you teach it to your children, you tell them this is what I heard from the rabbi in the shiur, this is the story. You're passing on the Torah. But, but, why, why, but why from the, let's say even from Tukfat Agionim, why do we choose to present them here in this slide? Well, we had tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Because each one, look at this, look at this. No, look at this. Each one had the link. Each one saw the other one. Look at the years. Mm. The years crossed so paths. They, they, they the all lived in the same the lifetime. So they were the greatest of no, the No, so here. Okay, so thank you for asking. So here, they're brought down because they was father and son. Okay. Here they're brought down because there's, there's a teacher and student. Okay. Here they're going in, they all lived at the same period. Can you see there's a period about between 40 years, 30 years between each one? So mm -hmm. they all saw each other, they're all connected. You could say you could say we could probably if we did the research, we could probably make make hundreds and thousands of different lists with different people on. Yeah, there's different links. Yeah, there's many, many different links. That's why I said here, when you've got the split of Sfaradim and Ashkenazim, you can follow the train back from Ramba. In fact, I don't know if you know somebody called Johnny Danan. Uh, the nan, he was one of my name, Ben Hanov. On his ketuba is written from Rambam, Ben Achar Ben until him, the nan. Amazing. You can see the, the direct link. So there's different ways of going. And I said, maybe one time I'll do the different. I just discovered it, like just before the shiur, uh, a safari route from the Rambam to Rabbi Vadi So I could have done the same thing as well, because I was actually in Rabbi Vadi's house. Uh, and I heard shiur from him as well. But I'm doing the different way. This is the Ashkenazi way of doing it. But it's the same. Till here, it's the same. From here, there's many, many routes. Okay? Does that answer your question? So here you go, Rashi and his descendants, so Rashbam, Rabbi Nutam, was his grandchildren. And then they passed on the, the Alakha. Uh, the famous ones I just mentioned, the Ozarua, the Maram, the Rottenberg, um, the, uh, and the Tumat Adeshan. Tumat Adeshan is brought down in Alakha, many poskim from the Rama. Rama is the famous one which is brought down on the Shulchan Aruch, and he lived at the same time as Ariya Kadosh, the Sephona, the Barbanel. But these were links. Why is it in yellow? Rama was a son-in-law. He was a student of Rav Shlalom Shachna, and then he married his daughter, um, and he lived at the same time as the Marashal. And this was also the, the Rabbi Shao Falk is written on the Shulchan Aruch, is a commentary on the Shulchan Aruch, the Sman and Drisha. Then, and this is where it gets a bit cool, this is my favorite part, is the family tree of the Gaon Mevilna, because um, Rav Naftali Hirsch, he was a Talmud of, of the Rabbi Shua Falk, and he was a descendant. These are all sons or son-in-laws, okay? Son or son-in-laws um, from to the Gaon Mevilna, the Vilna Gaon. 
Vilna goes at the end, he was the son of Sholom Zalman. Look at the years, every year is accounted for. Beragola is the commentary on the Shulchan Aruch. He writes down every halacha where it ends in the Gemara. How did Shulchan Aruch make up halacha? He didn't make up halacha. He saw the halacha in the Gemara and then he brought it down. Where does he say? He doesn't say where he brought it from. So the Beragola, Rav Moshe Ravkash, he wrote a commentary called Beragola. And he said, this halacha in Shulchan Aruch comes from this Gemara. And every time when I study Shulchan Aruch, I always look up where it says in the Gemara. And where is the other Chazaka? So right? but because I, I thought that actually he looked at the other Chazaka as the reference. No, so, one second. Don't get confused. Yad Chazaka is a generation before that. It's not a generation, an era in the Rishonim. Yad Chazaka yeah. was Rambam. That's way over here. This is the time of the Rambam. By, by next, uh, after Rashi, about this period of time. Yeah. Okay? So I'm just doing a link. Even though Rambam, he was there, you can see on the side, they lived at the same time. But I don't have a link. Here I've got direct student and, and, and son. Mm -hmm. Here the Vilna gone. He was, Rav Moshe Kram was the Avbedin Rav of Vilna. That was his son, Rabbi Eliyahu Hasid, was called Hasid because he was righteous. And that was his son, his son, and the Vilna gone in 1797. That takes us up to the 1800. Now it gets exciting, okay? Rabbi Eliyahu was the Vilna gone, and he was born in 1720. 1979. Who was his student? Does anyone know? Live same time as Balatanya, Balshemto. Who was that? Who said that? Zaeli. May. Oh, man, amazing. So the Avchaim Velozhin. He wrote the famous Nefesh Achaim. He was Rosh Hashiva in Velozhin um, in the year 1749. You can see that he was directly Talmud from the Velnagon. That's he's buried in Lithuania, okay? Now, he had a grandson who was called Rabbi Yosef Dov Soloveitchik, Beis Alevi. He was a follower, future Rosh Yeshiva in this Yeshiva. He was called the Beis Alevi, and we studied him in Yeshiva the whole time. He's very famous, um, his works in 1892. That was just under a year, uh, just over 100 years ago. Now we go, his son was Reb Chaim Alevi, Reb Chaim Brisk, Chadushi Reb Chaim of Reb Brisk, Al Shas and Al Ramba, brings up to 1853. One second. Yes. So you see, that was his, his son. You can see when he was born. He died in 1892 during his lifetime, obviously. His son, anyone know? Is Reb Velvod Soloveitchik. Reb Yitzhak was in 1959. He lived in Yerushalayim. Mm -hmm. He was Rosh Hashiva in Brisk in Yerushalayim. And then if you heard his son passed away this week, one of the rabbis that passed away this week was Rabbi Meshulam Dovid. I'm sure David, yeah. uh -huh. He was the Rosh Hashiva in Brisk in Yerushalayim. And this Yeshiva is still going today. And I was going to go to this Yeshiva. Uh, and his Talmud, both of my Rosh Hashivas are learned by two people. One, they were both Talmudim of the Briskarov. And that is... Rabbi Ram Gurvitz. I don't know if you recognize him. He's Rosh Hashiva in Gateshead till today. He's mm -hmm. a Rosh Hashiva. People who studied in, this, in his Yeshiva was, for example, Rabbi Yaakov Hillel, um, by his father, and also Rabbi Dain David from London. He wrote the books Anfa Erez and the book which I studied with you today. This book was written by him with a Chiddush which I mentioned today about Bnei Chorin. That was from him. And here you can see this is the great yeshiva where Rabbi David studied, where I studied, where my brother studied. And that brings us right down to our Zoom Shia uh, by Mayor Gabai, spelled wrongly, co-founder and the director of our weekly parasha Shia on Zoom <laughs> since 2014, right till today. And that's everyone who's in the Shia. You can trace your leg back to me, back to the Rosh Yeshiva, Rabbi Vron, where I studied there. I was studying there for five years, for four years. And after that, I studied by his brother-in-law, Rabbi Tzvi Kushelevsky, for five years. He was also a Talmud of the Briskarov. Um, before that, we got Rabbi Chaim, bring us back to the Tzivmi Velozhin, and brings us back down to the Vilna Gon. And then we got Ben Achar Ben, to the Rishonim, Achronim, back to the Nevi'im, all back to Har Sinai. But we got the Torah. And that is the link. So you appreciate... The Torah that we have is direct. We're not, we're not telling stories here. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that part of the show. That was fun.
Right. Let me let, let, let me tell you something else. If you are this Shabbat, if you're Tunisian, it's a very very special Shabbat. Yeah, Pasha Tito. Because yeah, because so that it tonight. So that tonight. Tonight is that it first day night and Shabbat they do big kiddush and big because I, I don't have the date exactly, but the, there used to be an epidemic uh, 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 where the children used to die. Yep. And through prayers and whatever, it stopped on Parsha Titro. Yes. And since then, they took it upon themselves to do a big uh, Shabbat. Yeah, and also another reason for it is because they, was, they wanted to the teach the children the, the Torah, their importance. They're seeing they're losing the children and they haven't taught them. And that's why yeah. that's from Parsha Titro. And one of the mm -hmm. minagim is they do everything in mini. Because the yeah, main yeah, thing yeah. Is, is, our, yeah. uh, is our children. Yeah. 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 The, the whole thing I said there is the Gadot Tanah Bin Kha. Tonight, they, they buy uh, baby chickens for each baby. child. Yeah. yeah, baby chickens, yeah. They cook clean in French. I don't know how to say in English. Very small. But this <laughs> is part of the tradition. that They keep the tradition to pass on to the children. When you show the importance <laughs> that we have to the children, I think Joe just missed the best bit. <laughs> the, the I best of, always went to the toilet. Which what you know? I just no, I just didn't do it. Okay, I'll do it again for you. Oh, how you ended it off to link to me, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'll do, I'll do it quickly. <laughs> you saw this part. I, I was you go up to the Gone of Vilna? Go to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We pass for Lord. Up to the Vilna Gone. The, yeah, Levi. The Lord in the Beta Levi, Rabbi Tzchak from Brisk. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Solovechik. So. That was my Rosh Hashiva. He was a Talmud of of, of, of the of, of uh, the Briskarov, and that was I studied with him in this yeshiva. Also, Rabbi uh, David studied here. My brother studied here, and that brings up to today oh, wow. to this college here. Wow! So we need a picture of Mayor in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. Well, that's talking, for next time. Yeah, but so it could be for anyway. Talking, talking but it's the roots. It's the same. Mayor, it's just many about, roots for everyone. Everyone has a different route, and there's many of them roots. Yeah. I heard she also from uh, from Rabbi Yosef, and he learned from the Kafa Chaim Ben Ishchai, also all the from the Sfaradim, from Rambam. So there's many, many different routes. Okay, so thank you very much. We'll stop recording tonight. And we've got, you still up for Halakha or you want to keep it for next week? Yeah, I'm good. Anyone else? Uh, I've, got, I've got Siyum. Eli is doing Rosh Hashanah Siyum now. In uh, the so, uh, May, do you want to do or you want to keep I, I, I need to move back to Israel only, only, only to, only to, to uh, Mikdash Melech. <laughs> Are you zooming? Yeah. Okay. I hope so. Okay, hope so what do, we, do we have anyone else? If, if everyone's good. Gilad, Joe, we're good with I'm good. Time. You're good. Okay, so fine. So, we'll stop the recording and then we'll record. Do the start.